Welcome back, everyone, to the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. Or really, Mr. Germany Lover. But right now, we're going to revive the German coal industry. While coal isn't clean, it's cheap, and it's an established and historical industry. We should prop it up and expand their operations to meet our needs. Renewables are just untenable for the time being. We're led by Max Alt, as we just found out last time. I don't know what the Visegrad Separatist is. Um, but, gain Separatism, Euro Skepticism, Criticize them. Eh, I don't really care. Uh, but, oh, I guess we could lobby against this party here too. We do have a, we have almost 400 political power, which is kind of insane. We get quite a bit right now, which is quite nice. Uh, they do have a little bit of high popularity, so we're going to do that. And I really, really want this one. I still want this one. Education, centralized education systems. But we need 50 billion dollars and 100 political power, so we can play NATO in six days. Ooh, we get more influence. We have the political power for it. We might get become the leader. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try this. We're gonna take it alone. Cost us 100 political power. Gets us more debt. Not a deal, as we, you know, we'd like to pay down our debts. At least I like to pay down my debts. And then we have the political power to, for this one. But we get more research speed, quite a bit more. Monthly academic development. And in the end, we get way more academic development and stability. So we'll try it. You know what? <sighs> Fine, we'll help the orphans. <sighs> Jeez, you convinced me. <sighs> Fine. I guess if we have to help the orphans out. Uh, we have no war sport, of course, but we have a little bit of stability, which isn't bad. Looking over here, um, county welfare. Is it like the trust? Now, I could always do low taxation, but that doesn't help us. We could utilize party support, but I don't like doing that one either. I do like any weekly balance, balance power change. Where are, at? Where are we at right now? We are currently 29.8%. It's not bad. And for funsies, we could do this some more too. Or we could really develop our navy. Chief of the navy. Naval reformer. Naval experience gain. Capital ship attack. Screw it. We're going to do that one first. And then maybe we'll do uh, unity government maybe. I think we'll do unity government if we can. But we're going to slowly revive the uh, German industry as we're watching America continue to kill itself. Happens. Massacre in Tampa. Nine Meadows developments continue to stream out of the city of Tampa, Florida, as forces of the Athenbaufen Division have claimed victory over the Floridian National Guard. Sites of hanged citizens and dozens of public executions were carried out across the city. Soldiers of the National Guard were killed promptly upon slurners. So dozens of propaganda go pro videos from the Athenbaufen Division displayed. Civilians in the thousands fled the city in all directions to escape the horrors of the group causing massive traffic jams and delaying reinforcements to the city. Estimates vary, though, has been most likely agreed upon. But the National Guard suffered 4,000 casualties in the defense of the city and a further few hundred in executions. Dear God. Oh, there goes Redneck Revolt. The Southern Federal Command has done quite well for itself. Blockaded Taiwan in an unprecedented and highly aggressive move, the People's Republic of China has imposed a comprehensive blockade on Taiwan, utilizing its naval fleet to encircle the island. The blockade extends, extends beyond the maritime domain as well as China's also restricted air travel, effectively preventing both civilians and government officials from departing Taiwan. These actions plunged Taiwan into a state of acute panic, and is participating in a severe economic crisis as the island's economy is critically hampered as it is cut off from both imports and exports, isolating it from the global trade and further exacerbating the crisis. The international response to China's blockade has been one of widespread condemnation, particularly from Western nations. These countries have called for the immediate lifting of the blockade and urged China to de-escalate de de the situation. Loyal allies of Taiwan, notably Japan and Australia, have expressed strong support for Taiwan, emphasizing the need to uphold international law amid the global cur current global t turmoil, and are promised to provide direct aid if escalation continues to increase. However, the effectiveness of these responses is undermined by the distraction of the U.S., currently embroiled in its own domestic conflict, unable to provide the level of support it might normally offer. On the prospect of military competition looming, Taiwan's situation is increasingly precarious. The absence of American support, combined with the escalating tensions and economic stranglehold imposed by China, Cast a shadow of Taiwan's future and leaves its allies grappling with an uncertain and potentially dire scenario. Asia gets hotter. Oh, this part of Mexico is, uh, demilitarized. Look at that. American refugee waves. That makes sense. Severe cartel presence. Yeah, that's probably pretty bad. Obrador's moderate revolution. And then you already have Pemex, of course. We have Canada, too. Emergencies Act. American refugees. Ooh, yeah, they have a lot of American refugees. Emergencies Act. Commonwealth nations. You know what? Can we save all tiers of you? Because we're, we're supposed to be right wing, right? They have Trump populism, the conservative, and we're uh, ultra conservative, as we established last time. And these guys are neoliberals or social liberals, known as the Washington Consensus, as a dominant ideology after the fall of communism. 
Diametrically opposed to leftism, neoliberalism seeks to implement market reforms such as removal of price controls, privatization of government controlled industries, deregulation of capital markets, and lowering trade barriers. Opening the country up to globalization, modern neoliberalism uses progressive ideas in order to spread its markets and vocally support LGBT rights, feminism, and minority rights using the state in order to maintain such social policies. The most prominent neoliberal institutions include the IMF and World Bank, which have enacted reforms throughout the globe. For you, on the other hand, we're going to read about him in the right wing populism later, I guess. So, can we send volunteers? Because, you know, thinking about this, I think we're going to need, like, some army XP. I'm not sure if our divisions would be any good. Seven, oh my god, seven combat with. Nine. Uh, this, I'm not sure what this is. Regional command center? I don't remember using, I remember using, re, like, what, HQs back in, like, Hearts of Iron 2? Um, I'm that old. I'm not sure who to send. These are light infantry. I'd rather send this group because you're, you know, special forces and such. Um, but maybe armor would be the best. But do we have enough of anything? Our motorized are not good. We have some APCs, tanks, freight trains, main battle tanks were out. So you know what? Th this is my you know, starter campaign. I'm trying to figure out what to use, who to play as, and everything like that. So I'm actually going to send you guys over here. So. See what you can do. Better, oh, Federal Republic of Germany wins the leadership election. Oh. Germany assumes leadership of NATO. Germany is officially taking control of NATO, assuming leadership in a time marked by unprecedented uncertainty following the collapse of the United States. The German Chancellor has called for a unified European response in emerging threats, emphasizing the need for solidarity and collective action among NATO members. Germany's administration aims to bolster military cooperation and enhance defense spending across Europe to counteract potential aggressors. Observers know that Germany's leadership could herald a new era of European assertiveness in security matters as the nation seeks to fill the void left by the former superpower. As NATO pivots under German guidance, the implications for transatlantic relations and regional security are closely monitored by allies and rivals alike. So, what do we can we do? Well, we're 25%, even though we're like Euro skeptics and whatnot, so. Uh -huh. Do we get any options to do anything here? Oh, hello. Of course, we're leading NATO. The French Republic wants to overthrow us. And they're led by Marine Le Pen. Union rides, that's pretty normal. Awful NATO unity. Oil, have an oil crisis? Generation, generation of slackers. Ah, <sighs> the French. And of course, they're very, very divided. Um, oh, they have catastrophic COVID. What's COVID? They have 14 divisions, kind of like us. Interesting. We low, I mean, that's pretty normal. We have low manpower, insufficient resources, yeah. Oh, so we did this. Uh, gonna pay off our debt maybe a little more. Yay. Because right now we get, what, 8.7 billion a month? Flood recovery finally complete. A blow to the establishment. A what? Oh, remove all of that. That's good. We lose a little bit of, uh, that's okay. You know what? That, that could be worse. Army of Gods. So that might help us out. Um, we have quite a bit of air speed too now. It's pretty nice. Battle of New York. Patriot forces uh, clear Manhattan of snipers while propaganda agents flood Brooklyn with supply handouts. <clears throat> no doubt. The finest jewel on Thomas Rousseau's rapidly expanding treasury. New York has been completely subjugated by fascism. Did I read this last time? Big Apple Falls. So, Joe Biden's doing pretty well in this war. Um, he, even the Southern Federal Command is doing well. They lost control in Texas and everywhere else, literally. But these coasts is pretty good for them. Uh, hello. Ah, so we made it over here. I, I really wonder how we're going to fare. I don't know if we'll do well at all. I don't like that you're an old guard, though. Do we have anyone that's not an old guard? Yeah, Joseph Lotz. Um, I don't want... Attrition? Well, I hope y'all like St. Louis. That's where you're going. Lots. Uh, let's see what we can do. Like I said, this is my testing, testing campaign. Central American War. War is broken across Central America now. As led by Socialist President David Ortega. Actually, it's really falling apart now, too. And his new ally, Honduras. A face off against a coalition of conservative ruled El Salvador, Guatemala, and Belize. The conflict comes after weeks of mounting tensions, with Ortega's government pushing to expand the Sandinistas 
Sandinistas a revolution beyond Nicaragua's borders, sparking a fierce backlash from neighboring countries. The fighting has escalated rapidly along the Honduran border, displacing thousands of civilians and raising fears of a prolonged conflict. The outbreak of violence has reignited memories of the Central American crisis in the 70s and 80s, when the region was engulfed in bloody ideological wars drawing international attention. Now once again, Central America finds itself teetering on the edge of regional chaos, with Costa Rica and Panama opting for neutrality. The war threatens to engulf the entire region, sparking fears of a ripple effect throughout Latin America. Central America bleeds again. The PRC seizes the Kinmen Islands for the first time in over 60 years. China and Taiwan have re-engaged in hostilities with uh, the People's Liberation Army staging multiple landings on the Kinmen Islands. The Kinmen Islands, a long contested point in the cross strait relations, are a series of islands 8 kilometers away from the mainland and formerly governed by the Republic of China. At the crack of dawn, PLA, paratroopers and Marines captured key points across the city and swiftly defeating the small garrison of ROC soldiers on the islands. With the Republic of China declaring it a grave violation of the sovereignty of the Republic of China, but not yet declaring war, marks an unprecedented change in the geopolitical situation of the region. The strait further escalates. Uh, well, they're probably so small we can't even see them. Uh, Again, it is Yogan Love. Victorious in federal elections. Look at that. Also, South Africa's collapsed, too. The Communist Party of the Russian Federation emerged victorious in early elections held today, with Gennady Yugovnov at the helm. The outcome has triggered mixed reactions both domestically and internationally, with some expressing concern over potential resurgence of the USSR. Yugovnov, a veteran politician and long-time leader of the CPRF, addressed a jubilant crowd during a back victory rally in Moscow's Red Square. Supporters waved red flags and chanted slogans hailing the party's triumph, while Yugovnov vowed to prioritize social justice and economic equality. The victory of the CPRF, which secured a majority in the state Duma, marks a significant shift in Russian politics. The party's platform emphasizes a return to socialist policies advocating for increased state control over key industries and wealth redistribution. This ideological departure from the capitalist-oriented policies of recent years has raised concerns among some sectors of society. Internationally, Western nations have been watching these developments with caution. Memories of the Soviet era and its geopolitical implications have resurfaced, probably concerns about Russia's future trajectory under Zyuganov's leadership. Some observers fear that a more assertive Russia could challenge current global order and potentially revival tensions. The Gennady Zyuganov, a red eagle, interesting. Soviet Marxism. Huh. Oh, well, oh, yeah, there goes Mexico. Mexico collapses. For the decades, the lands of Mexico wrestled with a brutal quasi guerrilla war against cartels, criminal organizations responsible behind smuggling thousands of tons of illegal narcotics grown from the lush southern American jungles, up the north and across the U.S. border wall, and into the black market with the highest demand for drugs in the world. The cartels like Los Zetas and the Sinaloa have come to dominate the regional lives of people, where the territory fell under, resulting in massive amounts of systematic corruption, intimidation, and general violence. When the U.S. erupted into the Second Civil War, anything resembling a status quo in Mexico was uh, disintegrated as millions of refugees started flooding into the from the north into Mexico, overwhelming local governments and causing chaos and panic to spread uncontrollably. Despite efforts by the Mexican government to reestablish order by enacting martial law and trying to establish housing facilities, the refugees came to be too much and state after state declared a state of anarchy as the Mexican army became overstretched as the cartels began their gamut to take over Mexico by seizing local, uh, by force, uh, local governments, bringing another civil war to Mexico. With the remnants of the government holding up Mexico City, all that remains outside of the valley are numerous cartels, uh, warlords, and guerrilla movements making their moves. The chaos spreads. <sighs> Very nice. Wow, they really butchered Mexico. Zapat Zapatista Army of National Liberation. Cartel del Golfo. Narco Empire. Mass looting. Yeah, Plato El Plomo. United Mexican States. Of course, Mexico itself. Social democracy, la resistencia. Who are you? Cartel de Yalisco Nueva Generacion. Sinaloa Cartel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Chicanos are active in Arizona. State of New Mexico. You're holding on with Grisham here. Neolib. I guess Democratic Party of New Mexico, you'd say that. Texas Nationalism versus Greg Abbott. Versus these guys over here. Huh. And then uh, the Red Guard attacks. Long live the revolution. Poorly trained militias. Is yes, it all down here? Not nah, Bantitos. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Whoever wins down here, it could be like Adam Waffa versus Adam Waffen Division versus the Black Liberation Army versus basically the Confederates, basically. California is surprisingly peaceful, though. They've actually. Oh, never mind. They literally just declared Warren Cascade. Who are you, Caleb Malpin? Flexible ideologue. Oh, you must. You do have a unique focus tree. Oh, I gotta play as them sometime. That's kind of cool. 
High reactionary resistance, which you probably support, which you, you know, figure. Medium leftist unity. American Workers Congress. Wow. Liberation Army, of course, as well. You guys have unique focus tree now. Northwest Territories, of course, these guys do. The Patriot Front does as well. So, I don't know who Rousseau is, but, you know, your Vanguard. I'm supposed to be like feds in our own timeline or something. The Boston Offensive. Form the National Front. National Socialist Movement joins faction, or One Nation, One Solution. Operation Scipio. Operation Pompeii. Our Southern Brethren. The Dark Horse. Who are you? You look familiar. I had one of my videos. I had a hundred thousand views because I had said some sort of like national populist, national populist, national socialist on there or something. I forget. Not stolen, conquered. Party hierarchy, America's salvation. I don't know. It's only you know I put this on YouTube. I mean, they, YouTube's just you know demonetizing me as well, whatever. So I saw saw the rumble too, but whatever. National revival plan. I gotta play these guys too. I'll, I'm gonna play as Union of America as well. I will. As well as the American constitutional government. Can I play as New Africa? Not Maybe not yet. League of the South? No. Um, Atomwaffen? Yep. That's gonna get me banned off YouTube probably. Anything in Texas? Just to double check. How about Red Guards? Nothing. I doubt there's anything there. New Mexico probably. Why would New Mexico have focus tree? So we got a couple things we gotta choose here. And there's some few guys that they're fighting here too. Buffalo Anarchist Commune. Antifa. Uh, New York. Why would I want to play as Andrew Cuomo? Yeah, maybe someone does. Alright, so Patriot. Uh, there goes New York. Alright, so you're almost there. Because this is our first time actually being in combat. Can we hold out? It looks like for the most part, they're using infantry. They're using some mechanized. Um, which we do want to use mechanized, but we have special forces, so that's why I wanted to use them. Man, that took forever to get this one done. <clears throat> Support the manufacturing industry. That'd be good to do. Freedom factories. We lose a lot of liquidity, though. Sponge Cities program. That just... That would be good to do. Economic patriotism. Bolster the service economy. Service people? That's not bad. Invest in synthetics. Increase oil reserve supply. Uh, in all honesty, this would probably be better. Because you actually get more rubber. I like to rethink free trade, but last time we did do empower the chancellor. But if we can, I want to rethink the German uh, militarism, because since we have that available right now. German militarism, especially in the 20th and 21st centuries, is an incredibly sensitive topic. From the armies of the Kaiserreich, who had a viciously plundered Belgium, and slaughtered millions under the colonial rule in Namibia, to Adolf Hitler's regime, which perpetrated the Holocaust, even bringing up where militarization can get you labeled as a member of the far right in the modern day. Despite its history and negative connotations, we should begin rethinking the state of German militarism with the position we found ourselves in. Especially as the United States is on the verge of collapse and the Russian bear looming over Europe. Oh, we have raised welfare payments. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. I want to keep a little more political power for now. How is our economy looking? We still get uh, 11 billion per month. That's not bad. Negotiate support. Negotiate support. So there. Ah, oh, SPD's 11 percent. D-Link is not bad. Um. SPD lobby, lobby guest party. Whoop, my finger slipped. What happened there? Extra fuel tanks, anti ship missiles. We probably don't need that stuff. I'm not sure about drones. Have you, do you guys use drones at all? Please let me know in the comments below. Artillery would probably be important to do. Rocket artillery. I'm not sure we're using rocket artillery or basic armored ATGMs. I don't think so. Advanced artillery would be good to get. Biodiesel adoption. You know, I'll get excavation stuff too. Why not? Oh, we did also want to try this other stuff here too. State pensions, near zero interest rates. Yeah, I just do not want any more. Of course, we do want to lower. How bad is our interest rate? Two point five percent. Not so much. If we have, if we had no debt. Then I would do it. So our goal is to get rid of the debt as much as possible because I do not want any more debt. Get rid of the debt, and then we can have overwhelming interest rates because we have we would lower inflation that way. Yeah, that's smart thinking. I don't want any more debt though because we have you. We have no chief of the army because we need extreme Buddhist veil shortcomings. Development, critical thinking. Yeah, that's fine. Um, 
Moderate income hardships, yeah. Proportionate representation and minority exclusion. That sounds like something we could do. Free secondary education. I don't mind subsidizing higher education. I don't want to cost too much more. That would help with stability as well. Low regulation. Moderate regulation. Uh, we can always blame the minorities. I don't mind that. Volunteer. We're definitely not going to go disarmed. As consumers in the civilian economy. Consumer goods, partial war mob. Rigid training program. I do like rigid training. Advanced training might not be bad though. It would cost us a little bit more though. Which I don't know if I really want. Competent cohort. Yeah. General exemptions. Eh, I like staying in that one. Is there anything that we really want? No, not really. This would be bad. Eh, we'll do this one for now. Welfare, whatever. Let's not talk about it. Oh, there goes Bosnia and Herzegovina. I was reading about you the other day. Republic Srpska, left wing populism. Constitutional. The people government followed the Bosnian Spring. Because you guys are Kosovo. Hungary criticizes the coal initiative. The Hungarian foreign minister, Peter Sizarto, has criticized Germany's coal exit policy, stating that it would lead to increased reliance on gas from Russia. He also accused Germany of pressuring other countries to face all coal while turning a blind eye to its own dependence on coal. Hungary is heavily reliant on Russian gas, and Sijarto argued that Germany's lack of investment in alternative energy sources could increase Hungary's vulnerability to Russian energy policy. Germany plans to phase out its use of coal by 2038, a plan that has been criticized for being insufficiently ambitious. They should know their place. They make a good point. Oh, I'm just here for a good time, so. Oh, are you not in actual St. Louis? You're on the outskirts. Buffalo Anarchist Commune, okay. Did you learn anything? Are you actually in combat or not? Oh, so they have actually your superiority. We don't. David Hillberry Berger versus Kenneth Tobo. No, we're just kind of reinforcing the front line if selected. And we're in. Oh, God. That looks so bad. And now you're learning. Or at least I hope you are. Honduras versus El Salvador. So to this one, Europa United. We'll probably go with Bulwark of Democracy. Turkish Gambit. NATO allies. In, a, in the modern world, we have evolved into a beacon of European parliamentary democracy. Eh. Standing proudly is the world's third largest economy, especially in the aftermath of the United States collapse. This has prompted us to begin reconsidering our historical aversion to militarization, especially with the Russian expansionism and authoritarianism encroaching on the borders of the democratic Europe. This is not merely a strategic adjustment, but a necessary measure to safeguard the future of German liberty, which should stand as a bulwark above all of Europe, which would defend our people from the Eastern menace that has surrendered the development of mankind for so long. While collaboration with our European allies is important, we must reiterate that the future of Germany is the future of Europe, and that Germany is to be valued first, at least in our own affairs. Military coup in Burkina Faso. That's pretty normal. Uh, Burkina Faso's long struggle with jihadism has sustained another casualty. The government of the President Paul Henri de Niba uh, has fallen into a coup, eerily similar to the one which vaunted him to power in less than a year prior. The new interim president has, and youngest world leader, Ibrahim Traor, blamed French forces for the nation's fear to tamp down on the country's Islamist insurgency for its deposition, and has vowed to avoid defense agreements with Paris, coming after years of Russian meddling and building anti French sentiment. Uh, geopolitical games have doubtlessly influenced the course of Burkina Faso's politics. Already, the military cooperates only with the Russian PMC Wagner Group, and French military and cultural institutions within the country have faced the wrath of the mobs. Burki, who? A missile strike on Taiwan. Oh boy. In a shocking escalation, China has launched a series of missile strikes targeting military bases. Oh crap. Oh, oh. Um, across Taiwan. The strikes, which occurred in the early hours, have plunged the island into chaos, with explosions reported in Taipei, Kaohsiung, and other cities. Taiwanese uh, authorities are urging res residents to remain in Kiang as emergency services struggle to contain the damage. Early reports suggest that the military assets and their air defenses have been heavily hit, signaling a calculated effort by Beijing to cripple Taiwan's ability to respond swiftly. This unprecedented attack marks the most direct military action by China against Taiwan in recent history, pushing the fragile status quo to the brink of collapse, which it does. In Japan, officials are expressing deep concern, with fears that the conflict could spill over into the broader region. 
Turkey was caught for a first strain and warned that any destabilization of the region could have far-reaching consequences for East Asia. While diplomatic challenges remain uncertain, Taiwan's forces are mobilizing the face of an overwhelming barrage, knowing that the response in these critical hours may determine the island's future. Chaos in Colombia Colombia's plunge into civil war following a military coup d'etat shortly after the recent election that saw Gustavo Petro assume the presidency. The nation is now finding itself embroiled in a violent free-for-all with various factions, including the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, the FARC, the National Liberation Army, ELN, and Clan del Golfo vying for control of the country. Oh, look at this. The coup has exacerbated pre-existing tensions and fueled rivalries among these armed groups, leading to a dramatic escalation of violence across Colombia. The situation has been further complicated by the ongoing Second American Civil War and the Central American conflict, which left a power vacuum in the region and limited the capacity for international intervention. As the country spirals into chaos, the Colombian government has struggled to maintain control, with the military divided and regional governments facing mounting pressure from the warring factions. Civilians caught in the crossfire have been forced to flee their homes, exacerbating the already dire humanitarian crisis in the region. International response to the Colombian Civil War has been hampered by the ongoing crisis in the United States and Central America. The UN has called for an urgent meeting to address the rapidly deteriorating situation and explore potential avenues for a conflict resolution. With no end in sight to the violence, the future of Cambodia and the broader region hangs in the balance. The prices of blow better not go up. That's right. And of course, PRC invades Taiwan, which we pretty much all figured would happen. Marxist Leninism. Oh. Colombia. Colombian Armed Forces. And then you've got Subsistence Forces of Colombia. And then this guy. The fourth Taiwan East Strait Crisis escalated a full blown conflict between the P PRC and the ROC of the island of Taiwan. Oh boy. Uh, we're starting the Chinese Civil War and has ended with the exile of the Kuomintang across the Taiwan Strait. Hundreds of jets uh, I have flown, be begun flying over the island, engaging in dogfights with the entire Chinese Navy is mobilized with reports of the first sightings on the shores of Taiwan, the Chiang Islands, and immediate naval engagements between the PRC and the ROC Navy. The ROCA has gone in full mobilization while martial law has been declared across the entirety of Taiwan as the last forces of the old Republic of China braced for survival against the colossus of the CCP, with sightings of Chinese landing craft already crossing the strait towards Taiwan having been reported by coastal guards. A final showdown. Well, would you look at that? You must all be aware that the modern war is not a mere matter of military operations. It involves the whole strength and all the resources of the nation, brother against brother. So, as long as they can't land, that's fine. We hate orcs and each other. I hate everyone in this room. Stand up for Taiwan. Okay. Operation Silent Down. Dawn. Oh boy, that's really bad. Chinese embargo is pretty normal. Low international recognition, terrible mainland influence, and then Taiwanese independence movement. We'll see. All right, so we're gonna go with this one next. F-35 program. Let's do the Bundeswehr Pride. Defender Europe 20. More federalization, which we could do. We could federalize, I guess, maybe. Still. Oh, we're sort of Bundes Bundeswehr pride. The Bundeswehr has faced domestic and international ridicule for its small size. No longer, let us boast of the Bundeswehr and hold some grand televised parades. We'll see. Is it even worth getting Marines? Oh, we have special forces in the field right now. Support. Oh, we already supported the orphans once. I'm not. I'm done supporting you, orphans. Nope, we're done. Every man counts. More construction speed, less construction speed. Save your scraps. Bundeswehr. The modern German military was never considered a fully independent force to be reckoned with, but now, it's obvious like never before that it's a total lackluster with an absolute lack of recruits and funding. To revive faith in the Bundeswehr is to revive faith in international pride. Mobilize the nation. We get more really worth support, for at least for that for a while. Versus guide the army. More army XP gain. That's not bad. I'm gonna wait for that. Uh, federalization process is 5.5 percent. A reinforcing union. Declaration of Arab Jamahiriya. Sanction extreme regime in Russia. Oh well. Well, maybe we should not have done Putin versus Steha. Could have modified with more Russian sanctions. Chris has this grad. Push for federalization. Reinforce the union. Push for federalization. Huh. The day after the Libyan forces have finally established full control of the region of Maghreb, Saif al Islam Gaddafi has proclaimed the end of decades of humiliation of the Arab people by unquestioned and unpunished Western criminals and declared the formation of a new united socialist Arab Jamahiriya. Gaddafi has also shared his plans of creating a new platform for African and Arab nations and pledged to the idea of a more fair world 
order uh, and that the new state will strive towards. However, many experts doubt that this new power will bring stability to the region, as the new ambitions of the Gaddafi may uh, well endanger the neighboring countries, regardless of how it's a power to be reckoned with. Oh, third theory is back on the world stage. Nations whose nationalism is destroyed are subject to ruin. Okay. But how's your debt levels? How much have you learned here? Commando battalions. Because right now, what are you? Special forces, special forces. You're all special forces. If I could have more special forces, that'd be nice. Make you more usable. Ah, we could ban the party. Less than 5%. Oh, we could ban the SPD. That's kind of radical to do. But I kind of want to try it. We could lobby for the party. Yeah, I'll still lobby for him. Our guys are tired. Woo! Oh, there's no supplies, so you can get screwed over here. Okay. Pretty normal. Army education. Oh, we could. German military industry. I do like that. Inspire the youth. That's not bad either. I like that one as well. Best in R&D. That'd be really good to get another research slot. It's almost 2023. We could do Germany first. And we have this one. More popularity. Popularity support. Um, to National Socialist and Totalitarian Socialist support. But do we want to screw that up? Align to the right. All on our own. We do want to do this stuff as well. Revive the East. We have quite a few options we can do here. Uh, we could support these guys too. Military factories would be nice. How about Sponge the Crisis? Sponge City's program. Defense already is good. I'm not sure what this does, but we're going to grab it anyways because we can. Are we not making any arty? I guess not. Self repelled guns? I guess we won't make any already. Look at that. That's, that's really bad of us. Did you get any experience? Not really. Uh, PLA lands in Okinawa. Recently, the People's Liberation Ar Army organized a landing operation to occupy Okinawa. With coordinated efforts from the Army, Navy, and Air Force, they ultimately gained complete control over the region. Oh, look at this. The capture of Okinawa signifies the failure of the Pacific Defense Treaty Organization's strategy to block China's maritime power through the island chain strategy. This victory is not only a military success against the PTD, PDTO, but also has extraordinary historical significance for China. Undoubtedly, the capture of Okinawa will greatly inspire the Chinese military and civilians, providing better support for China's comprehensive war against PT, PDTO. Oh God, Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. Uh, the PDTO must reassess their war strategy and adjust their strategic deployment under the current circumstances, accumulating enough resources to face upcoming battles. The Peace Unleashed. Oh well, it looks like we're back. Partocracy. Our party, like every other political party, strives for political dominance for itself. And you civic resistance. Capital flight. Yeah, that makes sense. Reforming the Union. Oh boy. Shinzo Abe is dead. Former uh, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe tragically died in an assassination attempt. Abe was given a speech in the support of the Liberal Democratic Party in Nara when an unknown person shot at him. NK has reported that the former prime minister was injured twice. He was urgently hospitalized in a hospital in Kashihara City, a uh, prefecture, but the politician died after the attack. The security service detained a man, a 41-year-old resident of Nara. According to Nihon TV and NKH, Tetsuya Yamagami served in the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Forces in the early 2000s. According to the detainee, he wanted to kill Abe because he was dissatisfied with the politician. At the same time, according to Kido, Kyodo, the police later quoted the detainee, this is not a dissatisfaction with the political beliefs of former Prime Minister Abe. The murder of the former Prime Minister came as a great shock to Japanese society, and the consequences of the event remain unclear. Good night, sweet prince. It looks like Biden's breaking through, uh, but I do want to see what happens with everything else. So the Black Liberation Army is losing to the clan. 
or clan, well, the clan's gone, the Confederacy. These guys are beating up Ron DeSantis. Texas is a frickin' mess. Mexico's looking good. Formation of the National Front. Okay. Well, here we go. Since the beginning of the Second American Civil War, uh, America's various far-right paramilitary organizations have been fighting their own separate wars to overtake the U.S. With a new na National Front military alliance between the Patriot Front and the National Socialist Movement, soon that may no longer be the case. Well, Patriot Front and the NSM were ideologically somewhat different, the former representing fascism and the latter uh, National Socialism, uh, they realized that either of them wishing to establish a new government where white people once again are the dominant group in the country will have to work together. It's simply militarily unfeasible for either the group to take along the combined might of the American constitutional government and the Union of America on their own. Although the National Front Alliance currently only consists of the Patriotic Front and or Patriot Front and the National Socialist Movement, there are rumors that more organizations may soon join the future. The Southern Nationalist League of the South and the accelerationist Mason worshipping terrorist organization known as the Atomwaffen Division have both reportedly sent observers to the first national conference. However, it is likely that as more organizations that join the National Front, less cohesive its goals will become. In the end, only time can tell what future implications of this new military alliance or the war will be. The America's not right unites. So they all go to war at the same time. That'd be pretty, uh, kind of crazy. Special forces learn. I want to expand you more. Of course, we're, we're really bad at learning. Awful NATO unity. Economic downturn. Bundestag. Um, Bundeswehr is really bad. Division organization is bad. It's, no, that's not about army XP. Let's see. Oh, it's a lot of time. It's fine. Population's getting worse, but our death's getting better. Queen Elizabeth dies in 96. Queen Elizabeth II, the longest serving monarch in British history, has died at 896, drawing to a close the country's second Elizabethan era and heralding the reign of her son, King Charles III. The monarch, for whom abdication was never an option, died peacefully at Balmoral. World leaders pay tribute after the death of Queen Elizabeth II, her father, or her father. Her death means Charles now becomes king and the Duchess of Cornwall, the Queen Consort. In a statement on Thursday evening, the king said, the death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all my members of my family. We mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much-loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms, and the commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. During this period of mourning and change, my family and I will be comforted and sustained by our knowledge of the respect and deep affection in which the Queen was so widely held. It's a funeral. It's expected to take place at Westminster Abbey in central London on May, Monday, September 19th, which will be attended by her bereft family, as well as 2,000 heads of state, prime ministers, and presidents. European royals and key figures from public laughter on the globe. The end of an era. Well, we got the end of a lot of eras going on right now. Woo! I want whatever we choose to like last for us. I want you to build more. Save your scraps, y'all. We need more. Focus on flood reconstruction. Feel more stability. Uh, so we get to. Uh, fuel alternative? Oh, we can't get quite to that one. Well, we should probably go race down this way instead. Support the manufacturing industry. German manufacturing has been the lifeblood of Germany since the first Adenauer Chancellery. Our manufacturers have suffered since the fall of Wall Street, and we must do everything we can to ensure our own markets do not crash. Yeah, pretty much. This stuff is okay. Oh! Oh, there they go. Patriot Front declared war on them. So that'll throw a wrench in their plan. So we have the National Front up here. Oh, the United Oh, United Front. National Front. So that should release a little bit more pressure off Trump's group here. Oh, that looks like it could really leave a, relieve a lot of pressure. Poverty development decreases. We must fix this. So how does this development all work? Oh, look at this. Counter-air operations, multi-sphere. We'll go with aerial firepower. Yes. As long as these are cords, that's going to be pretty hard to take out. The rest of New England? Eh, never mind. They just took put this little chunk here. Fighting over rubber is pretty tough, though. That's not good that they got encircled. Are you learning? Or are you winning? Islamic resistance in Iraq declared war on the Sidrus movement. Oh, man. They just blew up. 
Iranian aid. The Iraqi Civil War. Oh, wow. Um, so after that one, we need all this. So, synthetic oil, our lifeblood, our only real opportunity for domestic oil supply. We must absolutely invest in new synthetic companies, not just for all, but our plastic and other import important components that petrochemical plants like these may make. And what do you think, free trade? Free trade doesn't work anymore. Asia and America are unstable and on fire. We need to conserve our resources and focus on covering our own domestic shortfalls. The globalized economy was a sweet thing, but we are undergoing a harsh awakening as our economists all prepare of tightening on exports. Revolution in Hong Kong. What years of resentment against the People's Republic of China finally boiled over, resulting in revolution in the city of Hong Kong. With unemployment high following the COVID-19 pandemic, combined with wartime restrictions caused by the war with Taiwan, public discontent with the PRC is reaching all-time high. As weeks of demonstrations have turned violent, armed groups mainly comprised of radicalized students have forced the police and government of Hong Kong out of the city and into Shenzhen. In addition to, uh, <clears throat> Uh, in address the city, Joshua Wong, the provisional leader of the movement, has declared that years of Chinese occupation will end today. From this day onwards, Hong Kong would decide its own fate. With lawlessness in the streets due to power vacuum and the PLA ready to strike across the river, many worry for a violent crackdown paralleling Tiananmen Square. Whatever happens, the world prays for an avoidance of bloodshed within the city. Five demands, not one less. Uh, we're probably really out of a lot of stuff here. So motorized, infantry equipment, main battle tanks, and multi-role fighters. Well, we use this immediately right now. I got more military factories. I'm not sure how we did that. Command power. Go with three here. We need quite a bit here. I want to get a lot there. Oh, our manpower's going back. Look at that. Well, it helps uh, when we modify the bonus bear. Recruitable population factor negative 60%, so. Oh. Let's see. Synthetics. Expanded national reserve is necessary to make sure our army and our population of oil when they need it. Even a time of crisis. May buy us only about precious months, but every second counts. Uh, uh, this is the future of this. 45% is not bad. Trading economy, pay off a billion dollars. It's not looking great for us. The rockets destroyed those guys. Got that thing done. Uh huh. There we go. Uh, how do we know which one is updated? Leopard. There we go. It's fine. Whatever. Okay. Freedom factories. Cap. Every man counts, yeah. Power consumers. There's at least we got more there. Uh huh. Lobby against the greens for now, because we can. Because now we're trying to build more and more and more and more. Folks who Dan. I don't think it's really helpful that much. Office park. More up factory open price GDP and tax income based on it. One and a half times the business value and business tax rate, respectively. Well, what do we show this up there? We'll start working on this slightly. July 31st, later this year. June, June 1st. 5% more construction speed is not very much. 5% is not very much. Freedom factories. Military fa factory construction speed. Our construction speed. Oh, well, every man counts. See what you can do with that. 34% high trust. Oh, you guys entice the masses. Well, we can do that too. No, we'll do that too. Why not? We can trust us, right? That's right. So we're still kind of stuck here. Oh, there goes Hong Kong. I mean, you kind of expect that, don't you? Are you not fighting these guys? Oh, hello. You're still getting attacked. PLA captures Taipei. Beijing, after months of brutal urban combat against separatist forces, who have been reinforcing and resupplying Taipei through treacherous mountain paths in the south and southeast of the city, the People's Liberation Army, ground forces were successful in retaking Taipei, thus achieving a main goal of the anti-separatist military occupation operation on Taiwan. Unfortunately, PLA sustained heavy casualties in the battle, but the blow done to the separatist and imperialist forces was necessary. Several hundred Japanese and Australian mercenaries were captured in the battle, and several hundred more were killed. <clears throat> With the capture of Taipei, the People's Liberation Army is now on the verge of totally destroying remaining separatist holdouts in Taiwan province. All troops from the Taipei operation will be redirected to crushing these holdouts elsewhere, which are mainly in the mountainous central regions of Taiwan, with little strategic significance and no access to, uh, access to coastlines or ports. 
Uh, General Zheng Zuzia of the PLA Ground Forces reported that the anti-separatist military operation was going as planned, and that all his separatist holdouts were expected to collapse within the next month. He ended his statement by warning that with imperial powers within the Pacific region that their support for the separatist terrorists in Taiwan was playing with fire, and the inevitable result was that they would be severely burned very soon. Taiwan is on its last legs. Just like Ron DeSantis right now, apparently, too. Beijing Peace Accord Sign. Largest armed conflict in East Asia since the Vietnam War has come to an end. War involved in the PLA, the ROCAF, and the JSDF, and several of the world's most advanced armed forces, which has left one of the world's most densely populated and affluent regions in ruins of fire. With countless eyes around the world watching, the result of the war was revealed. The People's Liberation Army had won a resounding victory over the PDTO, forcing the total capitulation of the Republic of China and the total withdrawal of all treaty forces, with only marginal resistance in the form of NRA holdouts in the mountains remaining. This comes as a surprise to know the Chinese victory anticipated by most international observers and the world leaders due to their vast advantages both in the economic sector and on the battlefield. Celebrations have commenced across China as the country as a whole again for the first time since 1895, with President Xi Jinping to give a historic speech to crowds in the capital. Congratulations have been sent to China from countries across the globe, most notably Russia, who has reaffirmed the commitment to what they call a multipolar world. As unrest flares up across East Asia, the PTBDTO reels in defeat and China plots her next move. As Asia approaches a future dominated by the hammer and sickle, one backed by the yuan, the paper tiger roars its last. Now you're not looking so good, are you? Invest in free trade. Free trade doesn't work anymore. Biden's slowly winning. Uh, they're even pushing through these guys, too. Texas. Republic of Texas. Look at this. Nate Smith won. Fight for independence. Yellow Rose. Well, if they were smart, oh, there's Florida. They would probably try to fight other people too, maybe. It's so hard to see their little division thing here. matter to me. I'm just here to learn. Build, build, build. So, we balance stuff out. Near complete oil crash recovery. Ensure domestic stability. The stability on the domestic front has been a continuous thing. We should give the FSB the green light to target protest leaders or at least temporarily stimulate the influx of protests from the extremists and opposition parties. Get more stability. Trim more work ethic. Place medium oil crash recovery with nearly complete oil crash. Oh, that would be good, yeah. That would be very good to get rid of. Ah. I want to ban the, a party. I really want to ban a party and see what happens. Oh, did you actually win? Can you actually win here? No. You cannot completely, utterly win at all. Navy's looking okay, though. Forgot completely about the Navy. My bad. Anything interesting? Uh, nothing I could really care about. Can you guys actually win here now? You're just here for the show. See what happens. Do you have any experience? No? Okay. Northwest. Oh! APLA's won the West Coast. Oh, my bad. Holy crap. Zoom in, zooms out. Oh! Whoa, 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 Hold on. Where did you come from? The Patriot Front has won, has almost completely beaten the Southern Federal Command? I mean, they're, they were advancing up here too. Did someone get nuked? No, they're just bombs. Okay. The National Socialist Movement declared war on the Black Liberation Army. Wait, hold on. They're to the National Front. When did you take these guys out? Did you have, like, sleeper cells down here or something? State of New Mexico. Federal Air... Oh, this is Federal Air Command. Charles Brown. Bulkish. Resistance movement, huh? I was like, no one might live there anyways. Western Military Administration. Oh, what's going on in Alaska? United States Naval Command. I guess that makes sense. 
naval dictatorship. What's going on in Hawaii? Ah, uh, they're still the same group. Where are you? Oh, you're the guys in Michigan. Michigan is weird. Overwhelming factionalism. And fighting militias, that's pretty normal. Rust Belt industry, yeah, definitely. Integrated nationalist militaries and our cause. So, oh. Interesting. Oh man, Biden is not looking so good now with fighting on three separate, well, four fronts. Over here, and then over here, and then over here, and then over here. Oh man. Hey, we got 50%. Look at that. Party popularity. Nice. You're taking from too many different areas. Can you guys help win there? AP Electric and Chicano. NPD rebrands. That ought to help them. The high mat. Son of Japanese Cold War begins. Tensions between China and Japan have reached new height, uh, new Cold War set of Asia. Long standing territorial dispute over the Diaoyu, Senkaku Islands on the East China Sea has been a source of friction between the two nations for decades. But recent developments, including the formation of the Pacific Defense Treaty Organization and China's invasion of Taiwan, has intensified the rivalry and raised fears of a potential military conflict with both countries dramatically increasing their military budget since the end of the Taiwan War. The defense pact created shortly before the Taiwan War has been viewed by China as a provocation, a provocative move, but Japan encountered Chinese influence in Asia. Since the end of the war, China stepped up its military presence in East, East China Sea, conducting frequent maritime patrols around the disputed islands and challenging Japan's controls over the area. China has also made moves to expand its East Asia Defense Initiative in, or, in an effort to secure its status as a global superpower since the start of the Second American Civil War. The situation remains tense and unpredictable, with both sides continuing to engage in provocative actions and rhetoric. As the world watches and waits, the fear of a potential military conflict between the two Asian powers looms large. The fate of Asia hangs on a knife's edge. Pretty normal. Well, it's 2023, so happy 2023 to everybody. You never know what's going to happen. But, you know, if we can win a battle. Sorry, that was my chair. That'd be great. Um, There. Why not? Banner party, banner party. Oh, party popularity. Literally no party popularity. Formation of the Association of Democratic States. Today, a historic movement or moment has taken place as the Association of Democratic States was founded. The current leader of the Soviet Russia announced the formation of their organization, along with envoys from the Republic of Belarus, Cuba, and Venezuela. The ADS aims to recruit only socialist countries and is seen by many foreign experts as the next international in Russian history. They believe that with the lack of American pushback, the RSFRSR was inevitably going to capitalize on the opportunity. The effects of the organization are already visible, as several agreements and deals are underway between the founding members and any future applicants. Surprisingly, Russian and Belarusian officials have already stated the future expansion. And enhancements of the organization are not out of the question. However, this claim has drawn criticism from the UN, which sees it as a threat to its authority. Uh, Red UN? They will be literally removed from the game. That's cool. I love democracy. Battle of Albuquerque, war escalates. Um, the debt payments are going up a little bit per month, uh, which makes sense because their debt's increasing, unfortunately. Inflation's can increase as well. So. But money, money, money change is not bad. Varied ammo types, alright. I'm gonna do that one anyways, because we can. I just want to help defend. For the most part. National Socialist Movement declared war on the League of the South. Well, I'm not sure if that was the best move to do that, because they, they opened this up, which makes literally no sense. Look at the Black Liberation Army. Eh, at least we have domestic stability, that's good. Alt, Nord Stream 2. Uh, if you want to do this again, please go ahead. This was a giant mistake. Uh, Battle of Albuquerque again. Yeah, they're actually pushing back into Biden's territory. You guys are doing okay-ish. Zelensky re-elected in Ukraine. Zelensky's re-election following the 2024 elections in Ukraine represents a significant development in the country's political landscape. Despite facing criticism and disillusionment during his first term, Zelensky managed to secure another term as president, suggesting that a significant portion of the population still supports his leadership. 
One of the key factors contributing to Zelensky's re-election is his ability to connect with the Ukrainian people through his popular style and background as a comedian. Uh, during his first term, Zelensky promised to tackle corruption, implement reforms, and bring peace to the Donbass region. While progress on these fronts has been limited, his charisma and ability to communicate with the public have helped maintain his popularity. A real life Jedi. They should have actually been allies instead, and they can help destroy this and then figure out what else they're doing. Patriot Front's down there too. Inner City Detroit. Oh boy. We're trying, man. Of course, there's not much we can do once we get no re reinforcement from the capital. So, let me get out. Can I rescind my volunteers? Oh, yes, we can. Well, we don't need you to say yes or no. Now, we're going to send you over. Uh, you're a tank guy, aren't you? Oh, we still have that one other division here. Ah, that's fine, we can wait. The Great Jackson Massacre. The Jackson fires have not yet gone out. Uh, across an one-time stronghold of the Black Liberation Army forces of the League of South rampage after a bloody and hard-fought siege, largely majority, largely targeting majority of black communities. Mass roundups of civilians were punctuated by indiscriminate killings of fighting-age men, with women and children expelled or hastily constructed for refugee camps. At least a thousand are presumed dead, and tens of thousands have been displaced. The BLA has vowed to take the city and exact justice from the invaders. International aid groups such as the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders have probably been denied entry into the combat zone, and the new government has been mum about its own relief efforts. It ain't ever coming back. These guys are doing really well. Formation of the East African Federation. Leaders of the six East African nations signed a historic agreement on Thursday for officially forming the East African Federation in a landmark event aimed at fostering regional integration and economic growth. The signing ceremony took place in Nairobi, Kenya, in response to the regional and international dignitaries. East African Federation, look at that. The EAA, which comprises of Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan, has the potential of becoming one of the largest, Africa's largest and most influential economic blocs. The Federation's combined population of over 170 million people, along with its abundant natural resources, presents a unique opportunity for growth and development in the region. <clears throat> the founding members of the EAF have pledged to work together to tackle common challenges such as poverty, political instability, and climate change. Furthermore, they have committed to promoting regional trade, infrastructure development, and the free movement of goods and services and people across their borders. The EAF's formation has been welcomed by the African Union, which sees the new Federation as a critical step towards the vision of a united and prosperous Africa. International observers have also praised the move, um, uh, expressing hope that it will serve as a catalyst for greater cooperation and stability throughout the continent as the EAF begins its journey. The world will be watching closely to see how this ambitious regional project unfolds and what it can mean for the future of Africa and its people. Good for them. Federal Republic of Ethiopia is struggling there. Uh, Iraq is in shambles. Japan is probably pooping itself right now. And uh, the Federal Air Command has gone. Focus resistance. Uh, American People's Liberation Army is lining up to be really big. F final Nord Stream decision. From the project will be held by another year. Project is canceled indefinitely. Hmm. Well. It's canceled. Now, now with them going red. We can do stuff here, but we don't really need to. A boss of service economy? We can work academic development, that'd be pretty good. In time of increasing unemployment and economic hardship, service jobs provide the lower class of the city income. We should fund expansions of restaurant chains, hotels, and other services related jobs which will lower unemployment and keep the lower class above water. Yeah, that'd probably be pretty good to do too. Let's see what type of mess we can get ourselves in. Can I see any planes? Oh, we can. 15 attack helicopters, I guess. Fighters. So, what are we fighting here? Oh, that's a lot of enemy planes. We're going to lose so many of our planes, it's not funny. It's alright, we're going to just lose our air force here. Oh god. Fifty billion, wow. Western military. Bring the army, huh? There you go. Well, they lost him some territory to him. Patriot Front has was doing so well, but now they're losing a little bit more. You guys are well, you're pretty much where you're stuck at. Looks like Biden could still probably win.
These guys have spilled over, haven't they? Let's go over here and see what happens. Unassigned divisions. Oh. That's fine. Oh, you actually make more divisions. Nice. Good stuff. Advanced special forces training. Battle tanks. 2023 still. Fuel uh, tanks. Industry probably. Yeah, let's go with that. So if you're attacking, can you help support the attack here? Can you support the, help support the attack here? Well, the shortage subsides. Are things on the up? Could be. The digital revolution. Oh, that'd be good to do too. Green's popularity. Yeah. Further investments in the technology are necessary for it to stay ahead of the curve. Microchips become ever more important and sophisticated tech industry has fallen behind in recent years. Finding the development of new art new tech startups ups and hosting excels from America will certainly give us an edge. Just I wanna see what happens. I love democracy. But I'll lose some more stability, whatever. Oh, what is this? Service the people. More income growth. Poverty, but it gets better. I like that one. German work ethics, not bad. Construction speed, I like too. Mobilize a nation? Quickly, the worst book is up. You know, we can do that one too. That sounds like a really good idea for us. Are you actually in the battle? Yeah, you are. Need a Saxon. Getting kind of fierce though. But you're learning. Ooh. And you are the what? Brigham's army has yeah, more than gun. Except propelled artillery, infantry, trip fighting, vehicles, yeah. So you've done alright. I don't want to attack there. That seems like a bad idea. Um, what you should really do is move here. And the supply's not great. Go there. You can circle that division if you're smart. No, but you're not. And you still can't. Get any more supply. Alright, so I'll just push more there over then. There you go. You're not gonna attack there. No matter what, you gotta attack smartly. Well, at least try to. You know, screw it, you can do this too. There you got. Well, I'm to recover faster since I can't reinforce, anyways. Um. You come up here. You move fast enough, so I'm not super worried about this. Six days, well, whatever. Get involved. You can probably pierce this, but that's alright. You getting more experience is important too. Whatever. Digital revolution. It's fine. I'll put Germany first. Germany must be our first, and our allies struggle, but we will struggle as well. And we can help them, we can help ourselves out first. I'm okay with that. Fine, hold for son. Are you learning? 5%, yes, you're always learning quite a bit more than the last group did. Because you are 24 combat width, so you have what? Main battle tank, infantry fighting vehicles, APCs, motorized infantry, advanced warheads, military coup Niger. Tensions in Niger reached a boiling point as the military abruptly toppled President Mohamed Bazoum's government. General Abdurrahman Chiani and his forces took control of key institutions detained the president and declared the suspension of the constitution, setting rapid corruption, deteriorated security, and economic mismanagement. The Wagner-based, or ba Wagner-backed military junta claimed the coup was necessary to restore order to the country. Like always, of course. Uh, the swift takeover marks the fourth uh, successful coup to occur in West Africa region. Uh, intensifying concerns of the deepening instability and anti-French sentiment across the Sahel. The international condemnation was swept with a Western-backed ECOWAS calling for an immediate return to democratic rule. Amid this, some political analysts warned that a new geopolitical standoff may uh, be brewing in West Africa and external powers vie for influence over the region's future trajectory. No comment. It's 
Dutch king assassinated, terrible tragedies unfolded for the Netherlands today. As the king of the Netherlands, Wilhelm Alexander was reported to have been assassinated. During a large public venue event attended by the king, a lone shooter approached him close to the royal family and was able to fire a few rounds at him, striking him in the chest. Local paramedics pronounced the monarch as immediately deceased with a gunshot wound to the chest being almost instantly fatal. The government, after promptly murdering Alexander, was promptly killed in a shootout with the Dutch law enforcement. Based on currently available information, the perpetrator was a devout anarchist from the Dutch Caribbean and preemptively planned to murder King Alexander. The Dutch police and intelligence services have opened an extensive investigation into both the perpetrator's background and the other linked suspects in the case. Current police estimations predict that it is possible that other anarchists or extremist individuals may have been involved in the planning and preparation for the murder. A national good morning has been planned by the Dutch government in response to the monarch's assassination. Tragedy befalls the Netherlands. What an absolute shame. We are really hampering home on the debt. Income, 155 billion per month. Holy crap. And social spending continues to go up, but it's because of the taxes. Business value factor has gone up. Personal value factor has gone down. Wow. So we're going to pay off all our debt as much as possible first. That is the goal. And then, uh, Sahel Security Pact. Texas, I'd be, I'd be concerned if I was Texas. I'm not going to lie. Right now. Because they might be independent now. It doesn't mean they're always going to be independent, though. Uh, they're slowly losing here in the Patriot Front. Yeah. The Navajo Nation declared... Oh. Yeah, see? Exactly. United Front. Oh, they're actually pushing in, though. Well, we are going to watch your career with great interest, then. Army XP game. At this point, we need Army XP game. We can't do that now. Oh, we're going to do two here at a time. Oh, do we get rid of the Greens? We literally get, we got rid we got rid of the entire group. Okay, that's kind of insane. I did not know or think we could actually do that. Um, SPD. League of the South is falling apart. Literally falling apart right now. Well, collapsing. American constitutional government, huh? Oh, that is really bad for Trump. Yeah, they're pretty much dead then. Indo-Pakistani war. The Kashmir conflict reached a boiling point today, as Indian troops crossed the line of control in Pakistan, igniting an all-out war between the two countries. The Kashmir disputes have been historically a sensitive issue for both the Indians and the Pakistanis. It has been a point of contention in recent times as pro-Pakistani insurgents have been active in the area, which India alleges are funded by the Pakistani government. The crisis on the border first started with a clash between insurgents and Indian security forces in the region. As the Pakistani military mobilized a few days later in an attempt to force a negotiation, the Indians were responding to it in kind, soon turning to the Indo-Pakistani border into the world's most militarized border. For the first time in history, the war between two nuclear powers has broken out, as the world prays that the atomic demon will not let be let out of Pandora's box. Many Indian-backed insurgency groups, such as the Balochistan Liberation Front and the Sindhudesh Liberation Army, have risen up in active warfare to supplement the Indian advance. Regardless of the outcome, many predict that the death toll of the conflict will reach millions. The clock reaches midnight. You're still fighting over here. Holy crap. Hey, he's becoming hellspider. At least he's learning. That's good. Well then. In the meantime, Army Reformer, experience gain. We get more organization. Finally, we can do something like this. The world's just falling apart as is, but still. Because I do want to increase this first. Germany first. A line of the right. We could, but we're not going to do that yet. Um, revive the East. I'm going to revive the East next. Oh my god, do we need to build? I oh, don't get me wrong. We don't need as much money as possible. Then we got 160. Debt to GDP ratio, 75%. We must be doing really great. Effects of, of our current debt, we get more stability because of it. Because I do want to expand, what is this division? This is a Panzer Brigade. So, let's see. So, organization is 30. We have to keep it at least 30. If we got rid of you, will this give you more organization? Actually, infantry fighting vehicles gives you a little bit more of everything. It hurts just with plans and fuel use, which is not good. But still... If you go with APCs instead, uh, you get five more HP. You lose. Not, you don't get nearly as much heart attack. Breakthrough is better for infantry fighting vehicles. You know, uh, more piercing with this. Weight goes down, which doesn't really matter too much. Motorized militia. If you choose this one instead, you need less motorized, but you need more mechanized. Interesting. If you get rid of the APC and go for motorized, you lose a lot. You don't want motorized at all. 
In between fighting vehicles, you'll lose a little bit of defense and soft attack and HP. But you get more hardness, more breakthrough, more heart attack, more fuel capacity. So really, you want to get rid of motorized. You really do. Our infantry is nice and all, but you don't get that many benefits from it, so... Motorized militia? It even hurts your organization. So anything you really want to come over here. And it gives you even more hardness, too. So that would look better overall. What is this? Signal companies, self-propelled artillery. Because I wouldn't mind throwing on some actual support artillery. Maintenance companies. From capture ratio, less organization, which I don't like to hurt organization at all. Support anti-air. Anti-air. Mechanized air. APC companies. Actually hurts your armor some more, too. Light armored recon. Hurts your armor. Everything hurts your armor. Armored recon company hurts your armor. Not nearly as much, but it still hurts. A tank company. That actually gives you more armor. You need more main battle tanks, though. You actually get some more recon as well. Because I would like... What is this? Launch... Multiple rocket launch system. Well, that seems like it's really worth it. So, recon tank. Self-propelled artillery. I like that idea. Main battle tanks. It hurts your organization, but barely. You get more hardness. You get a little bit more armor, too, which I do like. I'll go with that, at least for now. Give it just a little bit more armor. So, Oh! Well, there go the Confederates. Holy crap, the Reds are snaking through Texas. They're taking Austin. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, I just knew Texas wouldn't survive like this. I mean, they wouldn't really not see that coming. Energy farm, power plant. Well, we'll probably go with power plants for this campaign. Energy farm, power plant. Cost of fuel. Yet less fuel. But more steel consumption, unfortunately. Local construction speed and available resources. That's not bad. State of Michigan. Oh, there goes Michigan. So now you guys can push down this way pretty hard, probably. It's still a giant toss-up. With the south being pretty solid here now. And they don't have Texas, but... They're fighting the West Coast as well. Not good. It's really not good. How much more manpower? Oh. oh, now these guys are fighting Texas too. As we revive the East and support Western industry. I know I'm ignoring the military, but still. Who has manpower? You have half a million. You have three quarters of a million, if not 900,000. You guys have a lot. The Nazis have 47,000, which is so more than I thought they would have. And then the Reds have what? A couple. Texas has, well, Texas is almost dead anyways. Excavation 2. It's fine. More fuel gain for oil. It's fine. Can I, we can ban the SPD. It's freaking wild. This is looking better. Weekly War Sport is going up too. I like that a lot. Tennessee is, must just be burning like crazy. Oh, and they, they are now that it's a full... Completely. Oh, hello. Oh, you're all in the same group. So now Texas is a battleground state. Oh, and sorry, it goes Texas. Yeah, saw that one coming. Oh, do they have Chinese Liberation Army? People's Liberation Army units? Wow. Yeah, we saw that one coming too. Well... Less than two billion in debt. With Russia being going communist, not too bad for us. They're not being aggressive right now, but there's no guarantee. I'm waiting for them to attack Ukraine or something. Yuri Afinin. Um, we can do that one later. I'll restore the Bundeswehr pride. And then what? Inspire the youth. Revive German military industry. Eckler and Koch. Handel, Krupp, Rheinmetall, the last goes on. Germany is world-renowned and cutting-edge military companies. But we've starved them out of a domestic market. No longer. Get on the phone make some new contracts with them. Big contracts. They'll expand to meet our needs. I don't want to lose any money, though. I like industrial development, though. Not sure what development does, though. Oh. The National Socialist Movement. Oh, that's not smart. Inspire the youth? Um... I like this one because it helps modify our Bundeswehr, and I like doing that one. You know, this looks better. We can always build more military factories. Well, that was a giant mistake by these guys. Now the, the 
they're literally all fighting each other, which makes no sense. That hurts everybody in the end. Whatever. I'm just here to learn. So how are we doing over here? They're veterans. How many dead Americans do we have now? God, they just keep attacking. How do you have any guns left? Doesn't matter. We're banning the SPD. <laughs> Freaking wild. I'm not sure this is the way the campaign was meant to be played, but... Oh. Here goes those guys. I think either Joe Biden or the Reds are going to win. Probably. Is there you fight? Is Joe Biden fighting the Reds? Uh... Poverty development decreases. We must fix this. Oh, we'll see. Oh, wait, materials. Egypt calls the reserves following months of tensions between Egypt and Ethiopia over the construction of the resistance dam in Guba. It seems that Egypt is preparing it for its worst option. In the months preceding the mobilization, the construction of the resistance dams caused widespread water shortages in Egypt, resulting in instability that has forced the Egyptian hand. After the breakdown of the Second Dam Conference, Ethiopia responded by signing the Lake Victoria Compact, a mutual defense alliance between it and the East African Federation. Just today, Egypt has called upon tens of thousands of reservists into its active military, active military force, as over 100,000 Egyptian troops have moved towards the border. In addition uh, to this massive military mobilization, Egypt has created its own military alliance with those who have suffered due to the construction of the dam, as well as long-time areas and al allies in the area. As the two titans of Africa face off in the desert, it seems that the small spark can set the desert sands alight. How worrying. Social spending has not gone up more. Got even higher taxes. Okay, well. Someone's got to profit off war. A trickster? Oh, that's good, too. Well, we'll see what way they go. Oh, I guess these guys are united too. The Republic, Federal Republic of Central America. Left wing nationalist, Daniel Ortega. United Central America. Red Banana Republic. And the fork in the road of life. Um, I like this just because, even though this has stuff, I mean, you modify the Bundeswehr. But that was always a picturesque city for anyone that had the opportunity to either visit or live in. The fascinating historical monuments, the interesting cultural institutions, the massive variety of cafes and restaurants that dotted every street corner all made the city a favorite destination within the country. A lot of these spots were frequented by tourists provided some opportunities for Germans to make a simple living. It's not much, but it served its purpose for those who needed it. Wilhelm was one of these people as he was a young cashier in a local cafe that was frequented by a lot of tourists, especially by a lot of Americans and Canadians. But after the war broke out in North America, the cafe never seemed to reach the same level of customers that it always had when all of these tourists used to come and visit the city. He now had serious doubts that he could keep his job or even if the cafe itself could be kept open at this rate. A sense of ever-increasing uneasiness crept into his mind every day as it seemed that a status quo he was so used to now was crumbling all around him. A civil war in America, the exploding conflicts across the globe, the economic hardships and the rising tensions in Europe, along until all of this destroys him. He would often think about his own way back to him from work. The diverse scenery served as a great backdrop for a variety of thoughts that troubled his uneasy mind, however. In the last week or so, the scenery seemed to change on every street he passed. Now, on his walk to work this morning, he noticed that the streets were now lined with advertisements of all shapes and sizes for the German Bundeswehr. No matter what street he turned on, the vast volume of advertisements was now something Wilhelm could not ignore. He finally stopped walking for once and observed one of the massive posters plastered on the street corner. The poster depicted a tall and very handsome-looking German soldier saluting the viewer, with a text underneath it calling on citizens to fulfill their civic duty to the nation. However, underneath the slogans were a blob of text for the promising career advancement, opportunities, and sign-on bonuses for those interested. These prospects now anchored themselves into his mind and tasking him with a few ideas. Maybe this could be something promising for him, something that could serve as a way out of his troubles in, with his already shaky job. He wanted to think about this more, but even that seemed like a wasteful prospect to him. But as he resumed his walk to work and observed the ring of closed cafes and stores on the adjacent street, he finally reached a simple yet important conclusion. Perhaps this is where I belong, but we're going to end it there. So far, I'm a little surprised nothing else has really happened. I guess, is Russia supposed to attack or something? Because, I mean, it's only 2024. I'm sure they're gearing up for something. Economic sovereignty, of course. Neo-Stalinism, oh boy. Um, we're kind of in a lull period. New economic plan. A new new economic plan. Association of Democratic States. All right. And then Invincible and Legendary. Oh, boy. So I guess we'll probably have to see them next episode. I mean, we made a few more divisions. And we do have a little bit of combat in our belt. America's going to completely collapse. Probably into red country. But that's all right. That's for this campaign. Um, I think we went up there, though. We've been up quite a while. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. 
as we'll continue going on with Germany and hopefully the world doesn't collapse as we're making a lot of money. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.